Sayed is here. In this lecture, we would like to discuss about uh, teleportation paths or teleportation spline or teleportation trace. Last lecture, we already discussed how we can make uh, teleportation uh, to show the location that we would like using projectile. In this lecture, we would like to discuss how we can show this pass with some kind of Niagara effect. In order to make it easier, I already made uh, the projects and the things that we need, and I will explain how did I made them and how you can repeat it or use the project files. First of all, we need a pass that we already calculated using the projectile pass prediction. Uh, this pass can be an arbitrary pass that started from the hand location and will end uh, to the teleport location that we would like. This pass is not visible because it's a spline component. In order to make it visible, we can use a Niagara component as a particle system to visualize some particle system on top of that. In this case, I just made a simple Niagara system with two different uh, Niagara particles that one of them just a simple sphere that moved from one location to the other one and uh, using the spline pass and the other one is uh, the particle system that uses some kind of curly noises that moves also in the other direction as you can see in this way. The spline component, the simple spline component without any specific condition, we just have uh, two uh, points for it uh, that they have some tangent and location in the world space. And Niagara component is using my uh, Niagara system that I created for this one. This Niagara system consists of two main parts. These two things, I will probably remove them. We do not need it. It consists of two main parts. One of them is a base particle system and the other one, uh, we can call it um, curly particle. Yeah. And uh, if you want to visualize them, you can use one of the particle system that you have in your scene if you already added one of them. For example, uh, I think I can come here in the scene and add uh, one of these particles system here. And then uh, I should be able to select that. And when I select it, it will sh shows me the pass and the movement of that one. Great. Now we have our particle system again that uh, has uh, one curly noise and one simple particles. Uh, if you add the Niagara component as a part of your uh, blueprint, it automatically takes the spline component that exists in there and you do not need to input it manually. However, I created a custom um, a C++ class for this to make it easier for me to manipulate. If we open this um, C++ class, you can see I have a uh, spline component here as a U property, which is blueprint read and write in case that we need, and also Niagara component. And I initialized both of them in the um, constructor of this C++ class. However, I made the Niagara component hidden in the game. The point which is important here is if you are uh, working with this uh, Niagara component, you need to go to your uh, character that uh, your uh, project that built the CS file, and then you need to add the Niagara here. Good. Um, the next point is uh, when you add this that one here, you can use it uh, in the in your class. The next point is uh, when you uh, are doing that, it also makes it easier later to update the location and tangents of uh, your spline component by another method that is specifically designed for our teleportation system because I know that I need only two points. I just take the begin location and end location of my spline and then the tangent that I defined, I can easily uh, set them in the other component. There is already a method for uh, setting location and tangent of the spline points, but I created this method uh, to make it easier for me to manipulate. When you made uh, this uh, method, you can go back to your teleportation system and inside your teleportation, when you're uh, 
predicting the projectile path if you did it successfully then you can uh, trace for the uh, use the teleport trace and in that way you can make it uh, as a non-hidden in the game in the update spline location tangent for the first position or the begin location you can use the uh, first uh, components of the array of the past data which is the location of the hand somehow and also for the end location you have the hit result location and uh, for the forward vector or the for the tangent of that uh, location you can use the right motion controller forward vector because it defined the forward vector and for the end location we always want to have a vertical one it's my preference as you can also choose the other things and accordingly you will have your tangent However, you should take care that uh, I'm multiplying with the tangent multiplier in the teleportation trace, which is 180, to make it uh, clear and uh, in a shape that I want to have it. Okay, that's it. It's very simple. Now, with these two components, if you compile it, and uh, then if you go to your VR character, and uh, first of all, you need to add uh, this um, teleport... Um, uh, spline or uh, the uh, objects that we created, the blueprints that we created from the teleport spline uh, blueprint, and you can save it uh, as a teleportation uh, trace target because uh, inside our C++ class, we already defined uh, an, uh, a teleport trace uh, pointer that we can assign a, a component to it. And here I'm assigning it on begin play. And after that, uh, when you have it already uh, inside the C++ uh, implementation, you can see we will check if the class can find this teleport trace object. And if, it's can, if it finds, then uh, we can assign the uh, data that we need or we can use this update spline location tangent. Perfect. Now we can test it in our game. And to see how does it work, I will just remove this one and let you watch the results. <laughs> 